Good morning, fellas, and welcome back to Me Plays Games, the show with a dinosaur hiding on the roof. My name is Matt, and Super Mario 64 is one of the most popular games to speedrun of all time. Some of the glitches and strats used in the run are among the most famous in video game history. So today, we'll be taking a look at the 70 star category, and we'll also look at three of the other categories in the next video. For more speedrunning content, subscribe to Me Plays Games and join our Discord server. Link in the description. Keep in mind that these videos aren't meant to be in-depth tutorials, just general overviews to give you an idea of what's going on. If you want to try out this run for yourself, I'll be linking the resources I used while researching this video in the description, including video tutorials and Ukikipedia, a wiki about all the game speedrun categories. Alright, let's get started. Super Mario 64 has 120 power stars, and you need 70 to beat the game. This is the absolute minimum and there is no way to bypass this requirement. Sarcasm. Foreshadowing. Tune in next week. The 70 star world record belongs to German runner D Whatever, with a time of 46 minutes 59 seconds. Shoutouts to him for reading over my script and helping me with the video by the way. D Whatever plays on a Nintendo 64, as do most of the other top runners, but there are other options with separate leaderboards on speedrun.com. You can also play on an emulator or virtual console on the Wii or Wii U. Although it is worth noting that the Wii version has less input lag, making it way better for speedrunning than the Wii U one. Mario 64 was also released on the Nintendo Switch as a part of Super Mario 3D All-Stars, but that version is listed as a category extension of the game. The first trick of the run comes before you even set foot in Peach's Castle, and it's called Lakitu Skip. By long jumping onto the very left edge of the bridge, you'll skip Lakitu's explanation of how the game's camera works, which saves about 8 seconds. Shoutout to my guy for sticking around after we just ignored him like that, by the way. I would've just stayed put if I were him. The first level is Babom Battlefield. The fastest way to accelerate to top speed is with a long jump. Once that's done, the fastest way to get around is with dives and rollouts. Rollout is a 30 power rock type move that doubles in power. When Mario lands on the ground after a dive, he starts sliding on his stomach. The longer he slides, the more speed he loses, which considering what we're doing is very bad. So instead, you can press A or B to roll out of the dive. If you roll out on the first frame when you land on the ground, Mario won't kick up any dust or lose any speed. This is known as dustless. Since A and B both let you do a rollout, runners will roll their thumb across both buttons to double their chances of getting a dustless rollout. The first star D whatever goes for is shoot to the island in the sky. Except shooting to the island is slow and bad, so we'll do it our own way. By holding A and pressing B with the right rhythm to kick, it's possible to climb the slope that you'd normally slide down. The rhythm you need to keep depends on how steep the slope is. This technique is called Buffer Kicks or Silly Kicks, which may very well be my new favorite name for any speedrun tech. Buffer Kicks will come in handy in a lot of other places later on, but they can be tricky since if Mario is moving too fast, he'll dive instead. After that, D whatever wall kicks off this wall and dives to get just enough momentum to reach the island. The fastest way to collect a star is by ground pounding right below it. You move slightly upwards at the beginning of the ground pound animation, which will come in handy for other stars later on. After each star, runners will hit continue and don't save, which saves several seconds over the course of a full run. Let's get another star from a bomb battlefield, shall we? This time, do whatever goes from behind Chain Chomp's gate. He uses a glitch called Bomb Clip to collect this star. By throwing up a bomb and catching it right when it hits the ground, you'll be holding a much bigger bomb, which gives Mario a ton of backwards momentum. Because, you know, holding a giant bomb would definitely make me slide backwards instead of, I don't know, instantly crushing my arms? Video games are great. Anyway, this momentum combined with throwing the bomb away allows you to clip inside the gate, skipping the need to ground pound the Chain Chomp's post. This saves about 12 seconds if you're good at the game, and about 12 minutes if you're like me and you can't ground pound the post to save your life either. Next order of business is Peach's Secret Slide. Or, uh, Peach's Secret Jump Down Into The Void. Sure, why not? D Whatever uses a technique called Slide Skip to get down the slide faster. By hitting specific walls at the top of the slide, you line yourself up to jump all the way down, skipping a huge portion of the level. D Whatever dives at the end to avoid taking fall damage, and also to slow down enough so he doesn't fall off entirely and die. There's a secret star you can get here for making it down the slide in under 21 seconds. Let's see if he can do it, yep. Here we go! Well, with that out of the way, let's head to Womp's Fortress. First up, blast away the wall. Once again, we will be ignoring the title of the star entirely. This strat is called Cannonless, which allows you to collect the star without blasting away the wall. Isn't it great? 
There are a few different setups, but in D-Whatever's world record, he collects the first four coins on this plank of wood, tiptoes forward to go into the ledge grab animation, sets up the camera, then holds straight down on the analog stick to collect the star without breaking the wall. To learn more about the other strats, I recommend Sean Raider's tutorial series on this game. I pulled a ton of other info from that guide as well. He never actually finished it, but it's got a ton of great info on the first half of the run. You need to change the camera angle in order to collect the star by just holding down on the stick. This is just one of many setups that involves changing the camera to make them more consistent. Certain camera movements are also used throughout the game for a lag reduction. The fewer objects on screen, the better. Next up, let's go for Fall into the Caged Island. Wait, let me fix that. There we go. Normally, you're supposed to get an owl to carry you up to the star, but with Owlless, you can give my guy Owliver a day off. That's not actually the owl's name, and that's a good thing. Anyway, D whatever gets up to this floating, rotating island with a double jump off the fence, followed by a wall kick and dive. But it's also possible to make it up with a triple jump or a side flip from the ground, followed by the wall kick. To do Owlless, runners will get another triple jump off on this island, then wall kick off the cage, holding left the whole time to get inside. Now is a good time to talk about wall kick mechanics in this game. Unlike other Mario games that came after it, wall kicks can only be done within 5 frames of touching a wall, and the timing of the kick will affect its properties. The earlier you do it, the faster and further you'll move away from the wall. Nowadays in the more recent games, you can wall jump at any point while sliding down a wall. So instead of getting the wall kick on the first frame, which is known as a firsty, you actually want to get it on the second or third frame. I'll be linking Drogi's guide on Owlus in the description as well. Next up, D whatever goes for the red coin and 100 coin starts at the same time. Womp's Fortress has 145 coins, so there are plenty of possible ways to go about getting 100. Let's take a look at the route he goes for in the world record. He gets 5 coins from this higher slope of the start, 8 from the circle in the water, the first red coin, 5 coins by the unopened cannon, 4 blue coins under the shooting to the wild blue star, 5 from this circle above the star, 3 regular coins and the second red one by the spinning plank, 5 from the nearby stationary plank, a blue coin from killing the piranha plant, red coin number 3 on the thin ledge, red coin 4 behind another plant, red coins 5 and 6 on the floating islands alongside 16 regular coins, red coin 7 on the thwomp, red coin 8 on the bomp, god Mario enemy names are so silly, 8 coins around these flowers and the last 4 on the slope. Even though you got the red coin star first, you have to make sure to collect it second, otherwise you get booted out of the level. Because for some reason, 100 coin stars don't send you back to Peach's castle, but red coin ones do. Let it be known that I straight up skipped the next star in my first draft somehow. Whoops. Either way, shooting to the wild blue is a pretty straightforward one. You can reach the platform the star is on with a side flip wall kick. It's also a good idea to slide kick into the star, because during that animation, you can't accidentally grab the pole nearby. Alright, next up is the boss fight against the Womp King. This star starts off pretty much the same as the Cage Star, except when you get here, D whatever wall kicks from the sloped wall, then dives and rolls out into the, uh... Can I call this a boss arena? No. You know what? Screw that definition. He dives and rolls out into the arena. Take that, Webster. Anyway, Mario is basically invincible during a ground pound, which allows you to pound sand. Which allows you to pound straight through the Womp King while he falls on his face. Not the best battle strategy ever, but hey, it's still thousands of times better than Blaine and Gen 1 of Pokemon. He spends so much time using literally worthless moves and healing Pokemon that haven't been hurt yet, that he forgets to actually attack you half the time. So congratulations, Womp King, you do not have the worst strategy of any boss in video game history. Anyway, do that ground pound nonsense three times and get your star. Alright, one last star in Womp's Fortress and we can move on. The last star in this level is to the top of the fortress. This star starts the same way as the Womp King star up until where the boss arena was. He whatever uses a side flip to get up to the star as quickly as possible. While we're on the subject, side flips make backflips almost useless in this run. Backflips take a long time to charge up, and side flips are faster and give you almost as much height. Next up, back to Peach's secret jump down into the void, patent pending. This time, do whatever gets the regular star you get for just getting down the slide. You know, it's weird that they didn't streamline the star like the 100 coin ones. It would be nice to be able to get both of them in one trip. Oh well. In the wing cap stage, things get a little wonky. The flying controls are whack, and Mario's hitbox is higher than it's supposed to be when he's got the cap. So, to collect the 8 red coins, you need to position Mario a little bit lower than you think you need to. Otherwise, you'll fly over the coins. Check out D-Whatever's controller display on his stream. For the most part, he's tapping the directions on the control stick instead of holding them, which makes flying easier. 
At the end, he lands on this button to unlock the cap and other levels for later, then double jumps off of it into the star to avoid a text box he'd have to scroll through otherwise. This is simply called a text skip. Alright, let's pay Bowser a little visit. In Bowser in the Dark World, D would ever collects the red coins before fighting Bowser. He starts by hitting the switch to activate some platforms to get the first red. Pressing the switch is pretty tricky though, because well, you know, fire is hot. Collecting the sixth red is cycle based, since you need a platform to be under the coin to collect it. D whatever just barely gets what's known as Tsukishima Cycle, the fastest one humanly possible. For the Bowser fight, D whatever spins Bowser around clockwise one and a quarter times and throws him into the bomb. You can also spin him counterclockwise one and three quarters times, depending on your personal preference. You could also spin him 65,536 and a quarter times, if you really like powers of two and you also want to get last place on the leaderboard. With one key down, it's time for the backwards long jump. <laughs> Yeah, I'm lying, the backwards long jump is actually banned in 70 star entirely. Just figured I should mention that at some point in the video. We'll talk about it next time though. If it were allowed in 70 star, it would be possible to do Bowser on the Dark World one cycle faster though, so Tsukishima cycle is actually only fastest in full game runs. Anyway, next stop is Cool Cool Mountain for 4 stars. First up, wall kicks will work. For whatever reason, doing a rollout off a ledge makes you immune to fall damage when you land, as well as getting buried in the snow. Then you can backflip and wall kick your way over to the star. This is actually one place where a backflip comes in handy. Very cool. Then D whatever gets slip sliding away and the 100 coin star at the same time. D whatever does a buffer kick here at the start, since that's the fastest way to set up a double or triple jump. He gets 22 coins outside before heading down into the slide. You need to get almost every coin on the slide itself, so no shenanigans like the ones you can pull on Peach's slide. By the time you get back outside, you should have 98 coins. Then you can grab the red coin on the tree for 100. Alright, last star before we move on. For Lil Penguin Lost, you need to carry this penguin down the mountain. This star isn't too difficult, you just kinda slide down for a bit. On this green slope, runners will aim to land as close to the bridge as they can, then keep sliding down. Going too far right off the slope will trigger the wind and make you drop the penguin though. One star, would not recommend. On to Big Boo's Haunt. In Big Boo's Balcony, you need to hit this fella three times. And oh man, Mario must have taken some supernatural steroids for this game. In 2D, you aren't touching ghosts unless you have a star. But at a third dimension, and my guy is absolutely destroying this boo. Ground pounding it, sliding into it, Mario can just do whatever he wants now. This is Mario's world and we're all just living in it. Isn't this game great? Buffer kicks are also used throughout the level to space your jumps properly. The next star is Secret of the Haunted Books. Or, you know, Secret of the Platform on the other side of the room. Normally, you're supposed to push some books into their shelves to reveal the door to the star. But, little known fact, Mario has actually hated librarians ever since his local library started offering Sonic comic books. So if he sees books out of place, he leaves them alone. I googled it to make 100% sure that Sonic books even existed for this joke. And it's not even particularly funny. Oh well. Anyway, you can just jump across this room to get to the other platform. In order to do this, do whatever does a buffer kick followed by a double jump, slowing down for a split second in midair to kick again. Now it's time to head to the basement. It's actually fastest to do three long jumps to get down the stairs and take some fall damage intentionally. For star number 20, runners will catch Mips the Rabbit. In order to do that, runners will dive and roll out twice to catch up to him, hugging the wall and adjusting their position during the first rollout to make sure they don't bonk on the wall. Dive one more time and catch him. If you miss, turn the game off. If you miss and Mips goes backwards, there's a backup strat where you get him to this hallway, side flip on the right side, and hold a dive until he runs into your hands. If he goes left instead, you can catch him by jumping and diving in the middle of the hallway leading to Shifting Sandland, which just so happens to be our next stop anyway. Nice. Inside the Ancient Pyramid features a strat called Pillarless. Normally, you're meant to either enter the pyramid from the bottom, or stand on the four pillars in the level to enter from the top. Let's do neither of those things. The bombs still don't function properly, so we can use their wonky mechanics to get into the top of the pyramid without popping the top off. By throwing the bomb and catching it before it lands on the ground, you'll once again be holding a much bigger bomb, which once again causes you to slide backwards. Now our goal is to carry the bomb all the way back to clip into the pyramid. Jump over the slope, then jump dive while holding down. Keep sliding backwards and ground pound by this quicksand. Do a wonky double jump to get up to the pyramid and repeatedly tap A to clip inside. Pillarless saves more than 15 seconds over playing the level normally. Once you're inside, just jump off the elevator to the star. Be whatever heads back into the level, does Pillarless again, but this time he goes for the Pyramid Puzzle Star where you have to collect 5 secret coins. 
All right, let's do another star from Shifting Sandland, and this time you're stealing a star from Klepto. The way D whatever does it in the world record is he runs up to the right side of this pyramid, then long jumps off the fly guy to spin his way over to Klepto. It's important to stay as far to the right as you can, because if you're too far left the fly guy will see you earlier and fly out of position so you can't jump off of it, and you don't need that in your life. Also, can we talk about this hitbox for a second? No? Okay. One last trip for the shining atop the pyramid star. D whatever triple jumps and dives over the slope, then sets up another triple jump to get into the alcove with the star. Once again, it's important to approach the star from the right, otherwise you'll bump into the wall and lose some time. Alright, on to Lethal Lava Land where we'll be getting 6 stars. First up is the 8 coin puzzle with 15 pieces. This one's pretty straightforward, just dive and roll out back and forth to collect all the reds. This game has a secret 121st star you can unlock by doing the Konami code, which takes you to a minigame where you actually solve the 15 puzzle. I'm lying. But 15 puzzles are cool, so that'd be neat. The next star D whatever goes for is Red Hot Log Rolling. Hold on a sec. That's better. Since you've unlocked the wind cap, you can just fly over to the star by triple jumping off the arch. Next up, let's jump into the volcano. You know, as you do. To reach this star, you need to climb up the volcano. Top runners will go for this trick called Lava Boost. By jumping into the lava fall, it's possible to take damage twice while also catapulting all the way up to the star. This is risky though, since Mario has 8 health and takes 3 damage per hit, so you could take damage 3 times right away and die. In Boil the Big Bully, D whatever quickly gets the bully's attention and side flips into him to knock him into the lava. Next up is Bully the Bullies. There's a strat here where you kill all 3 small bullies at the same time. You have to do some specific movement to get the attention of all of them and get them to run towards you though. Runners will hold upright on the controller, then turn around as soon as they collect the second coin. Next, you're looking for this specific texture on the ground. Stand there, face directly down, and time a low ground pound to knock the bullies into the lava. Then you can side flip and kill the big bully before it even has a chance to land. Cool. For both of these bully stars, you can intentionally damage boost across the lava at the start of the level. Next up is another trip to the volcano for the elevator tour in the Volcano Star. Scratch that, it appears that Mario has fired the elevator, because apparently he can do that. Anyway, D would ever damage boost off the lava to land on the elevator. Ideally, you'll butt bounce onto this green square, which will make it easier to set up a triple jump dive. We are now done using the elevator. Climb up a couple poles and dive and roll out into the star. With 30 stars down, we can open the 30 star door and head into Dire Dire Docks. Blah blah blah, insert rant about water levels here, moving on. D whatever goes for Chests in the Current, a pretty straightforward star where you just go around opening treasure chests in the right order. Actually, can we talk about this for a second? Why are there four chests down here? Is this where pirates throw their old chests? Did some group of pirates have four chests worth of stuff so they threw them all down here? If so, they are boring. Spread them out a little more, throw them all over the place, have people go on a wild goose chase. Or just keep it for yourself, there's an idea. Next up is Bored Bowser's Sub. In order to get on the sub from the front to collect the star, runners can align Mario's head with its light in the distance, then surface and hold right. Next up is the Manta Rays Reward, where you have to swim through 5 rings. You know, if the game will let you. It usually will, but some of the game's hitboxes are kind of wonky, and these rings are a good example. The hitboxes are rotated in such a way that you might swim to the edge of one and not have it count. The first 5 are fine, but if you miss any, that's when the hitboxes start getting screwed up. Holy fuck. Honestly, same man. I'm on page 7 of my script and we're not even halfway through the stars. Anyway, let's head to Bowser and the Fire Sea. Like the last Bowser level, D whatever goes for the red coins. After collecting the fifth one, D whatever intentionally long jumps into the lava to butt bounce off the platform with the sixth one. Can we talk about the word sixth for a second, by the way? It is so awkward to pronounce. Whoever decided that we should add TH to make ordinal numbers must have been drunk and playing with fridge magnets. There is no way the sequence of letters XTH should even be legal. But I digress. On to the Bowser fight. D whatever waits for the arena to stop tilting, then spins Bowser clockwise one and a half times. Once that's done, runners will jump back into Fire Sea and exit the stage to get back to the first room of the castle. Now that we've got another key, we can head upstairs. It's actually possible to double jump here to grab a ledge and skip most of the staircase. Nice. On to Wet Dry World. Like in Womp's Fortress, runners will get the 100 coin star alongside another one in one trip to this level. D whatever does it with Secrets in the Shallows and Sky, where you have to hit three exclamation mark blocks and push two boxes for the star to appear. Does it surprise you at all that speedrunners will do a star called Express Elevator Hurry Up? 
Anyway, there's a tricky triple jump wall kick, or TJWK, here on the slope towards the beginning of the level. If you land on a part of the slope that's too steep, you'll slide down and the game won't let you double or triple jump. But if you get it, you'll land on the elevator. We are now done using the elevator. You just needed to get out of your way to wall kick your way up the shaft to the star. Top of the town starts the same way as the elevator star, triple jump wall kick and all. After that, you just platform a little more to get up to the star. Finally, for Wet Dry World, shocking arrow lifts, or you know, teleport up to the star because it's fun. Wonderful. 39 stars down, 31 to go. Next stop, Tiny Huge Island. There are two entrances to this level. Runners will always go for the Tiny Island and 70 star. First up is 5 Itty Bitty Secrets, aka run around the level looking for spicy numbers. This time the secrets are this hole in the wall, where the cannon entrance would be on the huge island, nothing, the hole the big iron balls come out of, and the hole under the water at the top of the level. And by nothing, I mean the entrance to Wiggler's Cave. Next up, the tip top of the huge island. By side flipping on this platform, it's possible to clip through this wall and get further up the mountain. There's another clip closer to the top to land in the water. Finally, runners will also do Pluck the Piranha Flower, where you have to kill 5 piranha plants for the star. The best way to do this is by slide kicking, which you can do by pressing Z and B while running. They don't all spawn at the same time though, so you have to kill them in a specific order. Before moving on to the next level, you can get a free star just by talking to this toad here. You get the same reward for socializing with this guy as you get for crushing a sentient block of concrete. What a game. Let's head to Tall Tall Mountain, which is what I call most people because I'm short. <laughs> First up is Mysterious Mountainside, where you normally either find a secret slide on the other side of the level to end up here, or you could use this updraft to land above the alcove then fall into it. Let's do neither of those things. There's another precise triple jump wall kick you can do here, followed by a ground pound to get all the way up. This jump requires a specific camera angle, and you also need to start your triple jump in a pretty precise spot on the ground. Runners call this tech Breezeless. Next up, D whatever goes for the Red Coin Star. First, you get to these four coins on the mushrooms with a series of dives, rollouts, and long jumps, then flips and wall kicks his way up these platforms for the last four. In breathtaking view from bridge, we see what's known as Mountain Clip. Runners will aim for this light spot on the ground, long jump while holding up on the controller, then jump diving by pressing A and B on the same frame when they hit the mountain. This makes Super Mario 64 speedrunners the only people in human history to swim up a mountain. Eat your heart out, Michael Phelps. Do whatever's coming for you. These clips in this level and Tiny Huge Island are possible because you're diving into a slope where two edges connect. Next up is Scale the Mountain, which starts with Mountain Clip as well, but this time you actually go all the way up. Finally, for this level is Blast to the Lonely Mushroom, but speedrunners will grab this box and use it to bounce up to the star instead. Welcome to Snowman's Land. First order of business is Snowman's Big Head, which is basically just platforming up to the top of this big snowman. He would ever gets a firsty here, which is actually too high and causes him to bonk and fall down. Next up, Whirl from the Phrasing Pond, except there's no whirling or pond involved. You know how it is. Instead, D whatever jump kicks and triple jumps his way over to the star from a different angle. In the deep freeze is another quick one. Normally you're supposed to go through this ice structure and find the right way to the star, but it's just small enough for you to jump on top of it and fall down to the star. One more star from Snowman's Land before we move on. In Show with the Bully, you need to knock a bully off this platform. The fastest way to do that is by sliding into it, hitting him over and over and over until he falls off. Once again, the fastest way to the start of the castle is by re-entering the level and exiting from here. Runners head back down to the basement now to catch Mips again, and the same strats we used before apply here as well. Speedrunners of this game actually used to do Snowman's Land's red coins instead of the second Mips catch, but this new route takes about a second, trip to the basement and all. Talk to another toad for a star and it's on to Hazy Maze Cave. First up, Swimming Beast in the Cavern. Except it appears that the beast is on vacation. Normally, you're supposed to use Dora to reach this star, but you can actually set up a triple jump on this platform to get to it from above. This only works because the level doesn't have a ceiling, which I'm pretty sure makes it not a cave. Whatever. Amazing emergency exit starts similarly to the last star, except instead of triple jump wall kicking, runners will long jump the other way to the star. Metalhead Mario Can Move features a tech called Christmas Miracle, and no, I am not making stuff up. Christmas Miracle is essentially using a triple jump wall kick to activate the switch, allowing you to complete this level without the metal cap. 
Finally, let's do Watch for Rolling Rocks, where you, well, watch for rolling rocks. Avoid all of them here, then double jump wall kick up to the star. Re-enter the level and exit out to the start of the castle again, then move on to unlock the 50 star door. By this point, D whatever has 58 stars. You know how it is. Next stop, Rainbow Ride. Cruiser crossing the rainbow features some pretty difficult movement. In order to get on the sloped wooden plank, you need to do a tech called Lakitu Bounce. Runners will side flip to start a triple jump, get a frame 3 or 4 wall kick, then jump off Lakitu to get on top. Come to think of it, it's kind of weird how Lakitu is an enemy in this level, considering we've got a Lakitu for a cameraman in this game. Oh well. Anyway, once Lakitu Bounce is done, you can climb and wall kick the rest of your way up to the star. Next up, Coins Amassed in a Maze. Getting the first red coin is pretty tricky. In fact, do whatever gets it on his second try on the world record. After that, you just do general Super Mario 64 shenanigans to get the rest. A couple of times you'll see D whatever slide on his stomach for a split second after diving, since you actually want to slow down in certain spots to collect all the coins here. Tricky Triangles honestly sounds like the name of a chapter in a bad geometry textbook, but nope, it's the next star in Rainbow Ride. D whatever hits the switch to flip the triangular platforms upside down so he can walk on them. Then he makes his way up to the star, side flipping to change directions quickly while also gaining a bunch of height. Finally for this level is swinging in the breeze. This star starts off the same way as Tricky Triangles, but he makes a right by these donut blocks instead of a left. Then he long jumps his way over to this platform with the star guarded by a flamethrower. Alright, last level before the Bowser fight is Tick Tock Clock. One thing worth noting is that the clock setting depends on the position of the clock's minute hand. If you enter the level with the minute hand within a 30 degree range on top, all the moving objects will be still. If you wait for it to be on the left side, they'll move quickly, and on the right side, they'll move slowly. If it's on the bottom, it'll pick how they move at random. First star up, 100 coins, and D would ever enter the level with all the moving objects staying still. He collects the first 5 red coins towards the start, so you might think he gets the red coin star on the same trip. Nope, apparently not. That was just to beef up his coin count. Instead, he continues up the level and gets Stomp on the Thwomp as his second star. Huh. In order to get up to 70 stars, he needs to get all of them in this level, though. Next up, The Pit and the Pendulums, which just sounds like the title of an episode of a Kid Icarus cartoon or something. D whatever enters this level with fast-moving objects, but it's recommended for beginners to do it with them staying still instead. It's just barely possible to get a triple jump off these rotating platforms with the red coins after which you just keep jumping up to the star behind the pendulum. The next two stars feature similar movement up until this rotating platform. First, D whatever drops down for the get a hand star, then he goes for the roll into the cage star by this conveyor belt. Although, uh, he meant to do them in the other order. He didn't intend to fall the first time. Then he stops time for the time jumps on moving bar star. It's important to grab the ledge after this triple jump wall kick, after which you can keep doing Mario stuff to get the star. Finally, D whatever does the stop time for red coin star, and as you can see, stopping time is not necessary. After the fourth coin, it's important to go neutral on the stick, otherwise you run the risk of sliding away. Alright, with 70 stars under our- wait, hold on. There we go. Now with 70 stars under our belts, it's finally time to unlock the 70 star door and fight Bowser one last time. No backwards long jump necessary here, just dive and roll out your way to the top of the stairs. Once again, Bowser in the Sky, which has the lovely acronym of BITS, is cycle based. The faster you get to the rotating platform, the better. D whatever gets what's known as a monomo cycle on this run, but it's possible to do it one cycle faster with a precise long jump, which is known as TAS LJ. Check out this triple jump wall kick. Rad. For this Bowser fight, you need to throw him into three bombs instead of one. There are five surrounding the arena, so you have a few options. D whatever starts with this one directly behind Bowser at the start of the fight, then works his way around counterclockwise, skipping one bomb each time. I think that's it. I think I f did it, dude. Yes! Yes! F yeah! And there it is, fellas. That's the Super Mario 64 70 star speedrun. Shoutouts to the man himself, D whatever, for reading over my script. If you want to start speedrunning this game, check the description for resources to learn the run. Alright, that'll do it. Good night, fellas. Sleep well.